Lost me hat. Welcome back to the channel, guys. In today's video, we are learning the butterfly kick, AKA the bee kick. What I love about the bee kick or the butterfly kick is it's safe and easy to learn, but it encourages jumping, explosive power, which should be part of any decent movement practice. So today, what we're gonna do is a quick warm up, then we're gonna run through the key progressions to the bee kick, then we're gonna look at how could you turn that into a more advanced flip, the aerial, and then we're also gonna look at some combinations and how we can build it into some locomotion or some soft acrobatic flows. Let's do it. Fault like a butterfly, sting like a bee, ha! Ah. Okay, so I like to start pretty much every warm up with a squat, just some squat bounces, just get the knees, the ankles, the hips loose, maybe just get the hemis, a bit warmed up because we're gonna be doing some jumping. So let's get warm. So if you're not an overly flexible person like me, then this is a great one just to warm up the hamstrings on both legs. And what I'm trying to do here is keep my legs straight. You can even try just pointing the toes to encourage the legs to stay straight. What you wanna do is get that butt to go out as well. Whoa. Whoa. Let's do 10 of those on each leg. Just to warm up the hips and hammies. To start, you need to pick a direction. I am going to be pivoting off my left leg. So let's just step it out. One step, two step, if you're going left. If you go right and you wanna go right, you need to do it the opposite direction. So one step, Two step. Because the B kick has the same basic mechanics as a cartwheel, it helps to understand the basic cartwheel. As you can see, mine's not terrific, but it gets the job done. The key to the power in the B kick is in the dipping action. So we need to start with that. If I'm going left, I need to start by looking right. My arms go up, I dip down through and around so that I'm looking behind me. And as you can see, that dipping action starts to generate the power. After the dip, what we need to focus on is lifting the first leg. So we already have our dip. What we need now is that leg to come up. So all I want you to do is just push it behind you like this, just like we did in the warm up. Dip. <laughs> drive, dip, drive. And the leg really just goes back. After you get used to just lifting that first leg, what we need to do is practice spinning around. So we'll just do it slowly, dip, drive that leg, spin it around. So with a little bit more speed, dip, leg goes up and spin. Just try that. Dip, leg goes up and spin. And you'll start to feel some momentum forming. A great drill to understand what's happening with the legs when we leave the ground is to try it on an elevated surface or a box or a bench like I have here. We start our action with the dip. Then we place our hands looking behind us. We spot our target looking behind us and then we lift that leg and hop and practice our straddle. Other way. Spotting our target behind us. Let me get that float. Now it's time to add a hop just to get a feel for the action. So we're gonna start small, start slow with the dip, the lift and a hop and around. And you can start to get a feel for the action. Dip, hop. So making sure to look behind us, spot something on the wall. Dip, hop. And we're getting little baby butterfly kicks, little bee kicks, yeah. I don't know what to do with my hands. Let's talk about the hands or the arms for a second. So these are really helpful for generating power 
When you get to the look behinding section, you can put them out wide uh, and glide like a, like a butterfly, just to help with that momentum. You don't have to do this, but I find it helps. Once you're comfortable with the smaller hops, it's time to add some power. Now, you can start by keeping the chest and head a bit more vertical, a bit more upright. It feels a little safer, like this. See, my head and chest were a bit more up. Feels a bit more safe. And then as we progress, we put the head and chest lower and lower. Something I struggle with is keeping the legs straight through the B kick. Straighter legs makes it look a bit more classy, a bit more elegant. Um, when you're starting, it is a bit challenging to do that. So don't worry if your legs are bent when you begin. Uh, but as you progress, try to, try to straighten them out bit by bit. People who are really good at it tend to have those beautiful straight lines. As you get more and more comfortable with the B kick, you can start to invert it more and more and turn it towards a trickers aerial. So a trickers aerial is basically a cartwheel with no hands, a side on cartwheel with no hands. So we'll give it a go. So to turn the B kick into an aerial, a trickers aerial, we need to change the dip from this action into more of a diagonal uh, dipping action, throwing it down to generate the leg action up. So remember the B kick was the swooping dip. For the aerial, we need the <laughs> Let's give these tricker aerials a go, shall we? As you can see, mine's not pretty. Lost me hat. One key thing about the arms I noticed turning the B kick into the trickers aerial, after you get that diagonal dip, I really focus on throwing my backhand behind that first leg. I really think that's the secret to it, to generate the force. So that hand needs to go behind that leg. As you can see, one side effect from turning your B kick into the trickers aerial is the hat flies off. So uh, this hat is kind of stupid, really. I mean, it's got a freaking hole in it, so my head gets hot still, but uh, it's man bun friendly. So if anybody has any suggestions for more man bun friendly hats, leave a comment below, please. I just don't have the power, Captain. If generating power seems to be your problem, for the B kick or the aerial. What we can do to help with this to generate some power and some momentum for you is add a step. So because I like to go left, I'll start by standing, looking behind me. I can add a 180 degree step, step. Then I can do my B kick or my aerial. So it just generates a little bit more momentum. And you can already see I'm getting much more power When we start adding a step and some momentum, one thing I've been playing around with, which has helped me a lot, is keeping tension in the body. So when I step, if I can keep that tension through my leg, it carries through to the B kick or the aerial. So I'll try to demonstrate. Not sure if that came through, but I'm really focusing on keeping tension through my kicking leg and it just carries through into the aerial. Ba, 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 ba. Combo time. As promised, let's do a combination. Macaco to B kick. If you don't have a macaco or a monkey flip, be sure to check out one of my previous videos where I run through how to do that. Uh, so let's take a look at macaco to B kick. It feels good, it feels good. 
Okay, so taking a quick look at the Macaco 2 B kick. We won't go through all the progressions for the Macaco. Check out that other video for those. But essentially, what we're doing is a very easy, lazy Macaco. And that momentum will keep on coming through into our B kick. Woo! Well, my friends, that is it for the B kick video. I hope you've enjoyed yourself. I've enjoyed myself. I love doing these things. I love sharing. I'm not the best at this stuff, but I love sharing it and I'm having a lot of fun. So remember what the greatest Muhammad Ali said, felt like a butterfly, sting like a bee, ha! His hands can't hit what his hands can't see, ha! If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please subscribe. Any questions, drop me a comment. Tell me, is there a better hat for this man bun? And I'll see you in the next video. Yeah.